Okay, so let's get into the rest of these animals without a backbone. This is our fifth part in this lecture. So there's just a lot of animals here, which is why we have so many lectures over it. But we left off last time talking about phylum mollusca. And we're in the phylum cephalop or class cephalopoda, talking about the cephalopods, the squids, the octopuses, cuttlefish, and nautiluses. Uh, again, very, very amazing marine animals. Some of the smartest invertebrates in the world. These guys, octopuses especially, can think, they can logic, they can problem solve. Just some really, really amazing animals. Um, active predators, well-developed nervous system, complex eyes, etc. And it's that radula, it's the beak-like structure that's kind of scary when you look at the uh, um, octopus and the squids here. So last thing to mention when we're looking at squid, ten tentacles, octopus will have eight. That's an easy way to distinguish the difference. Uh, typically octopus have this kind of big rounded body and then they have all their tentacles coming out that way. That's supposed to be eight. Squid have more of that elongated body with the tentacles coming off of the front of that elongated body. Okay, so some interesting, unique features about both of these. Um, we want to make sure we're comfortable with class cephalopoda and what makes those animals unique and different than the other mollusks. Uh, there's the general overview of the octopus. Um, so you can see there's that big bulbous shaped body with the tentacles coming out there. So a lot of really, really neat features. Okay, so our last class within the phylum mollusca is going to be class Polyplacophora. These are known as the chitons, these guys down here. Now, they may not look like much, but they are another type of mollusk. And the key feature for chitons are these eight overlapping plates on their backs. So we look at these plates, these things right here. They are calcium carbonate, the same as the other mollusks with a shell. But with them being individual plates or kind of strips of shell, it allows for the animal to be a little bit more flexible. It can kind of bend I don't want to call them bendable, but they can actually fold their body over. If you guys have ever seen a millipede or a centipede, the little things we call roly polies, how those guys kind of roll and curl themselves is because their shells are made up of those plates. That's a big feature for them. Um, when we look at these guys, they live in what's called the intertidal zone primarily on the rocky shores. These are regions where you have an intense amount of wave action that is constantly slamming into the rocks and trying to dislodge marine organisms. So they live there, and what they do is their foot is modified into a suction cup that enables them to attach to that area, the rocky shore area, and oh, let me move these down for more room, and it enables them to hang on even though there's all of that wave action trying to dislodge them. The radula is used to scrape algae. These guys are pretty much strict herbivores. Okay, so the last major, major group of mollusks that we want to touch base on will be polyplacophora or the chitons. Now, our Next group to touch base on will be the arthropods. Right? So with the arthropods, we got some general features. This is actually the animal phylum that contains the greatest diversity on the planet. <clears throat> There's over a million known species. It's roughly three out of four animals you see are arthropods. Um, but huge diversity, huge, huge diversity within this phylum. And when we look at them, basic features, 
is that they have these jointed appendages that make up their body. They have an exoskeleton of chitin, that is the polysaccharide that will make up the shell of the arthropod. And that exoskeleton is molted. It's shed every so often. They shed the exoskeleton in order to grow. When we look at the body, we'll see the body that's divided up into segments, head, thorax, and abdomen. Now in some of the arthropods, we'll actually see the head and the thorax are kind of connected or fused into one larger structure. We'll call that the cephalothorax. But we will see three body regions in all arthropods, head, thorax, and abdomen. So some big features there. We're not going to talk about all the arthropods. There's just too many out there. But our focus will be which ones are we going to see in the marine environment, which ones are very influential in a marine ecosystem. And those are the members of the subphylum crustacea. These are your crustaceans. So lobsters, copepods, barnacles, shrimp, crabs, etc. Copepods are estimated to be the most numerous animal on the planet. We'll see that in these guys are part of what we call the plankton load. So to go into that subphylum crustacea, we see a few other features, a few features that aren't found across all of the other arthropods. And some of the key features we'll see in the crustaceans will be two pairs of antenna. They'll use gills for gas exchange. And then the head and thorax, so we mentioned there's three parts to the arthropod body, head, thorax, abdomen. In crustaceans, the head and thorax is fused together as a cephalo thorax. Cephalo referring to cephalization or head, thorax referring to the chest. So it's fused together, cephalothorax, and it's typically covered by what we call a carapace. That's a fancy word for exoskeleton or the shell. Okay, so that's what we're looking at with the crustaceans, the general features when we look at these marine crustaceans. Now some examples these guys here, these are our little copepods. There's their first pair of antenna, second pair, they got one little eye up there, and then there's a segmented body. This part though would be the cephalothorax, and then this is actually all abdomen. Let me get the marker here. Okay, so cephalothorax up there, and then this is all considered part of the abdomen. And if you look at their legs, these guys have five pairs of legs. The legs are all jointed. You can see all the little joints within the legs there. And the feeding apparatus, apparatus or the feeding appendages are also jointed as well. That's these things up here called maxillipeds. So that's kind of a typical crustacean, typical member of that particular uh, subphylum. The one we may see, we may not see much of, depending on where we're at, are these little things called barnacles. They live inside of shells that they produce, these hard secretions. And let me change colors. When we look at the barnacles, they produce this, this shell-like structure here. This is the actual barnacles animal right here, these little feather-like things called ciri they use as a filament to capture food flowing in the water and then they pull that in. Now barnacles are sessile. They don't move. They're attached. They're locked in right there. It's darn near impossible to break a barnacle off of a rock when it's alive. Even when dead it's difficult to dislodge. But they're attached and connected to that substrate right there. Um, reproduction in arthropods in the crustaceans the marine crustaceans is primarily sexual. 
we see most of them have separate sexes. You got a male and you have a female. So you have a male barnacle, you have a female barnacle, a male lobster, a female lobster, so on and so forth. And then they have to get the sperm to the egg, transfer. Sometimes they have special appendages that will transfer it. In the case of the barnacles here, the male has a penis and that will actually extend out and reach over to the female and deposit the sperm into her to fertilize her eggs. Even though there's sessile, the penis reaches all the way over there. So this guy, if that was a guy, would fertilize that way. This one would fertilize that way. This one might fertilize here and so on. So they do sexual reproduction. Um, a lot of them will carry the eggs. If we're talking about the lobsters, the females will carry the eggs and hold the eggs once they've been fertilized, keeping them safe on these little things called pleopods. Those are her structures that will hold the eggs. Trying to ensure or increase the chance of survival for the offspring. Okay, so we got a lot of neat things when we talk about the uh, crustaceans. You know, a lot of them, like I said, they're filter feeders or they eat detritus, kind of little stuff floating around on the bottom. We don't see a lot of active arthropod predators that are going after fish or other things. So a lot of these guys will just eat algae, graze on whatever's available, and consume that kind of stuff. So an important position in the ecological food chain when we talk about all the arthropods out there. Okay, so the next phylum that we want to explore in the marine world, and this is our last phylum, this is going to be phylum echinodermata. These are the echinoderms. Right? So sea stars, brittle stars, starfish, sea cucumbers, all these different members of this particular phylum. Basic features for the phylum. They have what's called a pentaradial radial symmetry. So they have this circular symmetry, but they have five parts to it. That's where we get the pentaradial. Penta means five. Radial is that radial symmetry. Uh, another big feature found in the echinoderms is this thing called water vascular system. And I'll go into this in more detail in a little bit here. But the water vascular system is going to be a structure that allows movement for the echinoderms. Okay, so they bring water in, they push it through a series of tubes, and then that enables them to move. That's that one of the big features. Um, most of them use their skin gills for respiration, so they're exchanging oxygen that way with the environment, and they possess an endoskeleton, an external skeleton. Now, when we're looking at this starfish, this is a chocolate chip starfish, there is a small, very thin layer of skin across that starfish. And then underneath it is, it is the skeletal structure. So it's going to have an endoskeleton versus what we saw in the crustaceans and the arthropods having an exoskeleton. All right, so the skeleton is considered internal with the echinoderms. All right, now, with the water vascular system, as mentioned, let's go back to that a bit here because that is an important feature. <coughs> it's going to enable movement, and it has a series of tubules and structures associated with it that bring water in, and let me come back up here. Water in through a series of tubes, and then that will produce movement of things called tube feet. And I have a slide I'll show you in a little bit here that shows how this works. But that is a very, very important feature associated with the echinoderms. Again, we'll get into that more in a little bit here. 